So the meetings industry is built on relationships, but we're supposed to embrace change. Which one is it supposed to be? We're going to talk about that today. Hey everyone, it's Leanne from LeanneCalderwood.com and today's post is a little bit like Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy. It's, it's analyzing why we're built on relationships and relationship-based business, but yet we're supposed to embrace change at the same time. And this really hit me the last couple of weeks because I had to change my hairdresser. My former hairdresser has now moved on to actually open up his own shop. Um, but in that transition, he needs to take a few months to get things set up. And as someone with short hair, I need my hair cut. So I needed to find a new stylist. And and so anyways, the, the stress started to mount as someone with short hair usually gets when changing hairdressers and hoping to find someone that can manage short hair and and all the, the, the nuances that come with that. And it really stressed me out trying to move to a new person when I had been loyal and with my hairdresser for so long and he knew my hair and now I was asked to entrust my hair in, in the hands of a new person. I'm at my salon and I ask the front desk person who she would recommend and they recommended a girl named Kylie who's a senior stylist. She's been there forever and I had seen Kylie around but still wasn't sure if she was going to be a good fit for my hair because she has hair all the way down her back. Um, but I liked her hair and I actually really liked her hair color so maybe I thought all right let's let's see um, if we should test the waters here. Um, fast forward, Kylie ended up being fantastic. She was very patient with me and understanding my needs and the things that I wanted to get out of my haircut and my hair color. Uh, and I ended up having a fabulous experience with her. And to be honest, I might just stick with her rather than moving with my old stylist to his new salon. And this whole experience got me thinking about how meeting planners treat relationships in the meetings industry. Once we create a relationship with someone, in particular a hotel or an AV company or even a destination, and we stay with that hotel or the AV firm or a destination because the people there understand our program and the people there get to know us and know all the things that we need for our program. But what happens when that hotel or AV firm is no longer available and we're forced to make a switch? Or even what if our program starts to get stale and we're forced to make a switch in that way just to shake things up? We are trained to rely on relationships, but now we have to forge new relationships and we have to trust new people with our programs. So there's two things that I kind of learned through this process. For meeting planners out there, there are people who you can forge new relationships with and trust, and they're going to manage your program beautifully. The first time around, it's going to be a lot of Q&A so that you understand each other, understand the needs of your program, you understand the, the um, limitations of the property. But in the end, a successful merger can be made um, when you choose to change venues or choose to change AV firms. But meeting partners, what I learned most applies to you. When meeting planners are changing and choosing your property over something that they've potentially used for years, it's not as simple as flicking a switch. You need to be patient with them. And more importantly, when you're trying to attract the business, you need to bring something more to the table than just a two-dimensional floor plan. Um, you need to give them a reason to give you a try. So there's a number of different ways that you can do that, but the lesson here is change is possible, but you need to coach them through it. So meeting partners, if you are trying to woo a meeting planner to your hotel, um, give them something more that they can work with. Give them a reason to trust you and to try you. And for meeting planners, there are lots of hotels and AV firms and destinations out there that want to be given the opportunity 
to blow you away and maybe change your meeting in a way that um, invigorates it with new energy uh, and, and a new format and, and, and a new way of looking at your program, which could pay off in dividends to you and your organization. So those are my deep thoughts for today and I uh, hope you like my new haircut. Um, if you're looking for more tips and tricks on how to attract meeting planners to your hotel destination or AV firm, please click on the link below this video on how to attract a meeting planner's attention. It's a checklist with lots of different tips and tricks that you can try to bring planners to your organization. Hope you enjoyed today's deep thoughts and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.